What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out Cody signs with WWE. Mustafa sends a message. CM Punk and other wrestling news. This has been going crazy on my Instagram, my Twitter, on YouTube. Everyone's been talking about it. it's been a reported leak that Cody has officially signed with WWE. So we're gonna check this out, man. Appreciate all the love and support on the channel. Let's get right into this bad boy, man. Hey guys, what is going on? This is WrestleMania back with <clears throat> another episode. WrestleMania 38 is just two weeks away, two which weeks. means fans should expect plenty of fireworks on SmackDown as WWE hypes its biggest show of the year. <clears throat> However, will SmackDown sizzle or fizzle? Join us now as WrestleMania looks at the 18th March edition of the Blue Brand, as well as the wildest wrestling news and rumors you need to know, including all you need to know about Cody Rhodes signing with WWE, Mustafa Ali warns wrestlers, a Kenny Omega surgery update, and more. As always, WrestleMania won't recap the matches, but look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. The Good Roman Shows Ass Roman Reigns is a badass heel, but tonight the Tribal Chief showed he's not afraid to show ass, wrestling lingo for showing vulnerability. Roman Reigns talks a good talk, whether it's him telling everyone to acknowledge him or boasting he's in God mode. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, he showed his true colors when he ran for his life when Paul Heyman informed him that Brock Lesnar was on the way to the arena. That didn't diminish Roman's character as a dominant heel. Instead, it helped build up his upcoming title unification match with Brock as it solidified the idea that Brock is his most fearsome opponent yet. Brock's out for blood. Epic backstage attack. Yeah, I mean, Brock was legitimately trying to kill him. I haven't seen a backstage segment like that since, like, the Braun Strowman stuff where Braun was feuding with Roman and there was vehicles being flipped over and stuff. Like, I haven't seen something like that that was pretty cool. Like, I like those type of vehicle segments. They're, they're pretty cool. They're over the top a lot of times. They're very over the top. But it, it just gives, it, it's a nice little, nice little flair to see every now and then. Tack. It's been a while since fans have seen a backstage attack like tonight's epic angle mm -hmm. where Brock like Lesnar drove a forklift into the Bloodline's car. The Godzilla-sized forklift only took things further as Brock drove its forks through the car's windows, giving fans the sense that Brock was looking to decapitate the Bloodline. Brock didn't get his hands on the bloodline, nor should he as the fans have to wait until WrestleMania for Brock to exact revenge, but he did send them a message that he won't stop until he's destroyed them, the perfect setup for WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. Pat McAfee magic continues. And I did see his promo. I definitely enjoyed it. It's just that video of me doing my, you know, reacting to the different segments on SmackDown. It took me about three or four times for me to even upload it because the video kept getting blocked. If I would have added the Pat McAfee like promo to it, I it would have taken me even longer to actually post that video because I would have had to cut up that promo so much. You know, WWE they they they're kind of strict on how much you can show of their content before they block it all together. So that's the only reason why I didn't put it in the actual video. But I did watch the promo. Pat McAfee's a gym, man. Pat McAfee cut a phenomenal promo tonight as management forced him to apologize to Austin Theory if he wanted to keep his coveted WrestleMania match. Showing he's a true student of the game, Pat set things up by expressing how much his dream job of calling SmackDown means to him, hence his willingness to apologize to Austin Theory. Pat's apology was as hollow as you might expect from a babyface dealing with a punk heel, and while McAfee apologized, he repeatedly insulted Theory until Mr. McMahon's pet project shoved him and dove out of the ring. WrestleMania has said it before, Pat McAfee's perspicuous passion for wrestling is infectious, and if his past in-ring performances are any hint of what to expect at WrestleMania, Austin vs. Pat should be a fun match that gets WWE some mainstream publicity. Kudos to Theory, too, as he's quickly becoming one of WWE's most promising young heels. I will say this, even though I don't think it's a WrestleMania-worthy match, <clears throat> I do think it'll be fun. It, it gives me the Bad Bunny vibes. I was not expecting Bad Bunny to be as good as he was at last year's WrestleMania. Dude was fantastic. He was easily one of the best things about WrestleMania last year, just to be honest. So I could see Pat McAfee being easily one of the best things about this year's WrestleMania. 
He's he is not that bad in the ring, and I know he's training, so that's that's pretty cool. <clears throat> Terrific tag team action. The WWE's buildup for the Women's Tag Team Championship at WrestleMania continued with the bout between the team of Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan and the team of Sasha Banks and Naomi, providing lots of excitement. While the no-contest finish of Natalya and Shayna Baszler jumping the two teams would normally put this in the bad, it was acceptable, as it upped the stakes for the Fatal 4-Way Tag Title match at Night 2 of WrestleMania. A Real WrestleMania Buildup Tonight's SmackDown was a fantastic show with plenty of action and, more importantly, plenty of build-up for WrestleMania. Unlike this week's Raw, the blue brand gave fans plenty of reasons to want to tune in to this year's Showcase of the Immortals, whether it was Brock's attack on the Bloodline, the tag team turmoil of the women's division, or Pat McAfee's electrifying showdown with Austin Theory. The Bad Where is the Ridge Holland storyline going? Hmm. While well, Holland's alliance with Sheamus has shown promise, things have stalled due to the introduction of Butch, aka Pete Dunne. Butch's addition has changed the dynamic and not in a good way, as it's unclear whether WWE wants to continue Holland's alliance with Sheamus or use Butch to create division. Even worse, WWE has used the New Day to put over Holland, and unless the promotion has a strong endgame in mind for Holland, using one of its most popular factions to put him over could do more harm to Kofi and company than it will to help Ridge. Mm -hmm. Charlotte vs. Ronda, just not feeling it. I said this on my uh, reaction to it, bro. I, 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 I don't want to come off as... Uh, a negative Nancy. Some some of you guys say, oh, you only say negative things about WWE, but you say everything positive about AEW. Shut up. I say plenty of things positive, the things that I like about WWE. And there's just things that I don't like about WWE. Same thing with AEW. It's just there's less things I don't like about AEW. I'm just being honest right now. And right now, this Charlotte Ronda shit is still, it's not hitting like it should. I'm sorry. It's not. It, it's it's not. It's not, it's, bro. Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey, a seemingly <coughs> monumental match as Rousey battles the most decorated female in WWE history. Unfortunately, the buildup has been as basic as it gets, with Flair repeatedly looking ineffective against Rousey. While the Queen has roughed Rousey up in segments outside the ring, the WWE has given fans no reason to believe Flair has any chance of defeating Rousey when she gets her in the ring. Rousey's tag match at Elimination Chamber shows she's ready, but the WWE has done an incredibly inept job of promoting what should be a dream match. It's, it's not but downright there. ugly. Nothing ugly about tonight's SmackDown and the blue brand came close to delivering a Grand Slam show. There was filler like the six-man match between Drew and the Viking Raiders against Happy Corbin, Jinder Mahal, and Shanky, and Los Lotharios putting over Shinsuke and Rick Boogs, but the matches did further WrestleMania storylines and give the undercard TV time. WrestleMania is starting to look good, especially when it comes to SmackDown's matches. It's looking all right. It's looking all right. I'll say that. News. Cody Rhodes signs with WWE. Topping today's news is a report from PW Insider's Mike Johnson that Cody Rhodes has signed with the WWE. Fans have been waiting for this news ever since Cody Rhodes left AEW, and rumors ran rampant that the American Nightmare might return to Titanland, possibly as early as last month's Elimination Chamber. Details are few, but Magic Mike reports, Cody Rhodes is signed with WWE. Multiple WWE sources have confirmed, Rhodes inked his deal about 10 to 14 days ago. Damn. The current plan is to have Rhodes debut WrestleMania weekend, with the early word among those in the company being that Rhodes will be on the Raw brand. Makes sense. As always, plans are subject to Mr. McMahon's whims, but it appears the WWE's current plan is to surprise fans with Cody returning to WWE on the grandest stage of all. It makes sense. Whether this means a Mania match or something else remains to be seen. What do you think of Cody's move? Be sure to let us know in the comments. I I get it. It's it's crazy how things come full circle. I will say this. Can WrestleMania benefit from Cody Rose being there? Hell yes. WrestleMania needs something a little bit extra because a lot of these matches on paper is not really hitting like it should. And having Cody 
make a surprise appearance or surprise appearance would be perfect would be fantastic and apparently he's supposed to be potentially facing Seth Rollins at WrestleMania I think a lot of people would love to see that I think that would be great the only thing I'm concerned with and you have to be concerned with when dealing with WWE is um well pretty much WWE's booking of Cody Rhodes he needs to have full creative control. If he doesn't, it's dead on arrival. This is not going to work with WWE booking him like they did before. He needs to just have free range to do what he needs to do. WWE allows certain people in the company to have free range. When it comes to The Rock, free range. When it comes to Stone Cold, free range. When it comes to Roman Reigns, free range. That's kind of... Funny saying it like that. When it comes to Brock Lesnar, free reigns. There's certain people company, they don't really give him a script. They just give him bullet points. They let him do their thing. Cody has to be that way. If he's not, you've ruined him already. That's my only concern. Do I trust WWE? No. But we will see. We will see. One of the big questions concerning Cody's WWE <clears throat> signing is whether he'll be able to continue his work as a judge on the Go Big Show, which belongs to Warner Media, the company that airs AEW TV and is a rival to USA Network's parent company, NBC Universal. Hmm. Dave Meltzer discussed the situation on Wrestling Observer Radio, and while he couldn't confirm Rhodes will be allowed, he did say, Again, Go Big Show and everything. If that show gets renewed, he can still do that show, I'm pretty sure. I don't know 100% because I don't know the contract, but I would be pretty sure he would work that into the contract, the things that he already had deals with, where mm -hmm. if it's a previous deal, I can still do it, as opposed to new deals, obviously Vince McMahon would have to approve, which sort of sucks when you want to be an actor and you're in WWE. Yeah. Cody's interest in working in Hollywood is well known, and he may have worked something out with WWE where he could take time off for projects like his reality show and the aforementioned game show. <clears throat> However, there could come a time when he's asked to step away from Warner Media related projects. Diamond Dave pointed out that NBC <clears throat> Universal could have plenty to offer Cody in terms of outside projects. Maybe there's going to be opportunities from NBC Universal for him now that he's got his thing. Fans are anxious to see how Cody is booked in WWE after That's leaving what I'm really, uh, as his major role in about. launching AEW. And the WWE's willingness to let him work in outside projects may depend on whether it wants to punish him for his role in AEW or show potential AEW hires that the company is willing to let bygones be bygones. What do you think will happen with Cody? Let us know in the comments below. Very interested to see how Mustafa's this menacing out. message. While Mustafa Ali hasn't been on WWE TV lately, the former Retribution leader hasn't been quiet about his disgust with his booking. You'll no doubt recall that Ali has repeatedly requested his release from WWE, and while the company hasn't granted it, Ali's recent social media message suggests there's an awful amount of anger inside the talented star. A humble and fair warning, as soon as all this gets sorted, I'm gonna absolutely body all your faves. Oh, damn. Does Mustafa mean to murderize the WWE's favorite wrestlers? It sure sounds like it. However, damn. does this mean Ali plans on returning to the E and working a program where he tries to take out wrestlers, or is he just talking trash while he waits to be released? Mm. Kenny Omega recovering from surgery. Kenny Omega is a hurting unit, but he appears to be on the way to recovery after working hurt for many months. Damn. This week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter reports that the former AEW World Champion is currently recovering from arthroscopic knee surgery. Ooh. The recovery from this will take about 10 weeks. He will be getting surgery to repair his sports hernia at the end of March, and that's about a two-month recovery. Damn. There are other things he's also taking care of. There is no time frame set for his return. Oh, yeah. WrestleMania sends its wishes for a fast and full <clears throat> recovery. Hey, man, he's been carrying that company on his back for a long time as the AEW World Champion working injured that's what you do that's the nature of being a wrestler a lot of times you're gonna be especially if you're the champ you're gonna be working injured so they took the title off of him now it gives them a chance to just heal up take your time heal your body when he comes back the crowd's gonna go crazy bro Free. where's punk last but not least where is cm punk Wrestling's straight-edge superstar wasn't on AEW TV this week, leading to speculation about his absence. 
Dave Meltzer claims to have the dirt as he reported in this week's Wrestling Observer that CM Punk will be part of the filming of the second season of the TV show Heels on Stars. Filming is over the next several weeks. That may be why he wasn't on either show taped in San Antonio this week. Punk could make an appearance on AEW TV and even wrestle depending on Heels' schedule. Well, guys, there you have it. WrestleMania is looking. Punk doesn't have to be there all the time, man. That's that's the thing about Punk. That's the thing about certain stars. You don't have to be there all the time. It gives opportunity for younger stars to have their spotlight. Like that's that's my only thing. You know what I'm saying? I think what he's doing, that's fine. Do do other things. Take time off. Whatever. It gives the other younger talent opportunity to shine because you get burnt out when you have something so much. So it gives us an opportunity to miss them, man. And whatever feud they have lined up for them, I'm looking forward to seeing it. But comment down below. Let me know. Are you guys excited to potentially see Cody Rose at this year's WrestleMania? And are you guys Potentially also excited to see him maybe wrestle Seth Rollins at this year's WrestleMania as well. Comment down below. Let me know, man, your thoughts and opinions on that. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 80K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next week. Peace.